Good day and welcome back into the final three-part, three-part thing of the three-part thing that we've been doing with the scary stories. I am Chef Schwasty and this is Schwasty Studio. Let's get to it. But first, that drink I made in the first video is gone. We're going to be a little bit more cautious with this drink because I have to work at 7 a.m. tomorrow. This one is called the White Satin Evening Gown. A young man invited a... Poo. A young man invited a young woman to a formal dance, but she was very poor, and she could not afford to buy an evening gown that she needed for such an occasion. Maybe you can rent a dress, her mother said, that poor ass bitch. So, she went to a pawn shop not far from where she lived. There she found a white satin evening gown in her size. She looked lovely in it. And that's not me saying that, that's the book, so you know it's real. Uh, I could care less. And she was able to rent it for very little. When she arrived at the dance with her friend, she was so attractive, everyone wanted to meet her. That's what the book says. She danced again and again and was having a wonderful time, but then she began to feel dizzy and faint, and she asked her friend to take her home. I think I have danced too much, she told him. When she got home, she laid her head down on the bed. The next morning, her mother found that her daughter had died. The doctor did not understand what had caused her death, so the coroner performed an autopsy. Ooh, turn, plot turn. The coroner found that she had been poisoned by embalming fluid. It had stopped her blood from flowing. That's not how... I'm... There were traces of fluid on her dress. She decided it had entered her skin when she perspired while she was dancing. The pawnbroker said that he bought the dress from an undertaker's helper. It had been used in a funeral for another young woman. And the helper had stolen it just before she was buried. The story was bullshit. Well, I mean, she's probably... Nope. This story is called High Beams. The girl driving the old blue sedan was a senior at the high school. She lived on a farm about eight miles away, and she used the car to drive back and forth. God, okay, I gotta pause. I am so fucked up right now. <laughs> Holy shit. Please keep that in. Please okay. In. The girl driving the old blue sedan was a senior at the high school. She lived on a farm about eight miles away and used the car to drive back and forth. She had driven into town that night to see a basketball game. Uh, no, sh no, I can't put that in. No. I cannot put that in. No. Take three. The girl driving in the old blue sedan was a senior at the high school. She lived on the farm about eight miles away and used that car to drive back and forth. She had driven into town that night to see a basketball game. Now she was on her way home, and as she pulled away from the school, she noticed a red pickup truck following her out of the parking lot. A few minutes later, the truck was still behind her, following her down a long country road. I guess we're going in the same direction, said the naive bitch. She began to watch the truck in her mirror. When she changed her speed, the driver of the truck changed the speed and matched her. When she passed a car, so did he. Then he turned on his high beams, flooding her car with light. He left them on for almost a minute. He probably wants to pass me, she thought. But she was becoming uneasy about the situation. Usually she drove home over a back road. Not too many people knew that way, but when she turned onto that road, so did the truck. <laughs> I've got to get away from him, she thought. And she began to drive faster, which is smart. Uh, you know, like 2 o'clock in the morning on a country road in a small blue sedan followed by a big red truck. That's what you do is drive faster. She was driving really fast down this country road, and as she was driving faster, the truck stayed right behind her, and then he turned on his high beams again, and got really close to her. What is he doing, she wondered. What does he want? Then he turned them off again, but a minute later, he had them on again, and then he turned them off. Guy was obviously bipolar. At least, or excuse me, at last she pulled into her driveway and the truck pulled in right behind her. She jumped from the car and ran into the house. Call the police! Call the police! She told her parents. Out in the driveway, there is some guy who is following me all the way from the high school. The man got out of the pickup truck. He had a gun in his hand. When the police arrived, they started to arrest him. Shot him with a taser and shit like that, you know, good stuff. You don't want me, he said, barely clinging on to life as he was being shocked by the taser. You want him, as is shaking like, uh, what's his face? Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox hand with his fucking taser arm. Uh, you don't want me, you want him, said Michael J. Fox. Crouched behind the driver's seat, there was a man with a knife. As the driver of the truck explained it, the man had slipped into the girl's car just before he left the school. As they were leaving, he decided there was no way to stop it. He couldn't call her because this, was, this book was written before cell phones. Not that he would know her number anyway, I mean... 
uh, I don't know this girl. Maybe everyone knew her number, if you know what I mean. But, I mean, no. All he could do was follow her and flash the brights and try and cast a silhouette every time that guy crept up on her with a knife. And that's what he was trying to do. He was a, he was a true bro. That is, you know, that's that's what we got to be doing in this world, you know? Oh. Is that all written in the book? Oh, I'm reading. <laughs> And that was the end of that story. I don't know where that ended. Uh, the next story is called The Babysitter. It was 9 o'clock in the evening. Everybody was sitting on the couch in front of the TV. There was Richard, Brian, Jenny, Doreen, and the babysitter. The telephone rang. Bring! Maybe it's your mother, said Doreen. She picked up the phone, laughing. But before she could say a word, the man laughed hysterically and hung up. Who was it? asked Richard in a stupid voice. Some nut, said Doreen. What did I miss? Obviously out of a 60s sitcom. This is how the it's written. At 9.30, the telephone rang again. Doreen answered it. It was the man who called before. I'll be there soon, he said, and hung up the phone. Who was it? asked the children. Oh, just some crazy person, said What's-Her-Face. About 10 o'clock, the phone rang again. Jenny got to it first. Hello, she said. It was the man. One more hour. <laughs> he hung up. He said one more hour. What did he mean? Asked young, ignorant, stupid ass Jenny. Don't worry, said Doreen. It's somebody just fooling around. Okay, real talk. No. About 10.30, the phone rang again once more. When Doreen picked it up, the man said, Pretty soon now. <laughs> As he laughed. Probably wearing the same hat that I'm wearing. If that helps your mental picture for the issue. What's that guy again? asked Brian. Yes, said Doreen. I'm going to call the operator and complain. The operator told her to call back again if it happened, and she would try and f trace the call. 11 o'clock, the telephone rang again. Doreen answered it. Very soon now. <laughs> that, that's his laugh now. Doreen called the operator, and almost at once, the operator replied, That person is calling from inside of your house. You need to get out. You need to get out right now. She tried to get the kids out, but they all died. Probably food poison or some shit, because Doreen couldn't cook. I mean, she it's tried. coming from inside the house! She tried a little bit, uh, not hard enough. I mean, everybody died. I mean, we're, we're going to Stephen King this shit. Every all right, we'll do one more. Here, put this on. No. Last but not least, I thank you for joining me on this horrible expedition of intoxication, and I curse all of you that made me hungover tomorrow. We have a fan favorite... The Viper. A widow lived alone on the top floor of an apartment. One morning, the phone rang. Hello? She said. This is the Viper. I'm coming up, he said, and hung up the phone. Somebody's fooling around, she thought to herself, and hung up the phone. A half hour later, the telephone rang again. It was the same man. It is the Viper. I will be up soon. He hung up the phone. The widow didn't know what to think, but she was getting frightened. I mean, fuck, wouldn't you? Once more, the telephone rang, and again, it was the Viper. I'm coming up now, he said. The hung, phone hung up. She quickly called the police. They said they would be right over. And when the doorbell rang, she sighed with relief. They're here, she thought. But when she opened the door, there stood a little old man with a bucket and cloth. I am the Viper. I've come to vipe the windows. Fucking gold right here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. I am too drunk to even sit up straight. I'm going to go lay down for a little bit. Yeah, if you want me to read more, there are two other books. Just pick out your favorites. I'll do them. I don't give a shit. But just remember, this is the day that fucking OP delivered. OP delivered. Thank you and good night.